Hi, so I'm Andrea Hernandez, and I am at a school called the Martin J. Gottlieb Day School. It's a K-8 private school in Jacksonville, Florida, and we started with self-hosted WordPress blog folios, which are a combination of blogs and digital portfolios. We started with kindergarten, fifth grade, and eighth grade, and those uh, those fifth graders that we started with are now 10th graders. Um, the 8th graders are in college and those kindergartners that we started with are now our 5th graders. And if you go uh, to our site, this is mjgds.org slash students and you can see that every student in our school has a blog folio. Here's kindergarten and the tabs show um, all the different grades and I'm on fifth grade here and you can see the three most recent posts. Now this is WordPress. How did you set this up? Is this a special theme you had developed or? This is a plugin and I did not set this up and uh, somebody else put this on here but it, it's just a, I can look for the plugin uh, later okay, yeah. and let you know what that is but it's a. Look how that previews right there part of that post that's so cool so the only thing about this that's a little difficult is it sometimes takes a little while to load so I'll show you if I click on another tab oh okay it loaded quickly so that's nice so this is everybody in the schools vlogs together yes and you can see down here if you, if you go back to the site that there are a few that are private okay so what we do is we give parents the option and uh, a lot of parent education went with this Sorry. Okay, we're in the classroom. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of parent education went along with this, and we created a media release that gave parents the option of having their um, their child's blog password protected or open to the world. And then we do work around connecting, connecting with other other kids around the world. And of course, the all the kids want to connect and get those comments when we do things like quad blogging. So it ends up being the children with the protected blogs that self-advocate to their parents to open up their blogs. And we went from probably 50% password protected to now it's a very, very small percentage wow. of our blogs that are closed. And so how many years have you all been, been doing this? This is our sixth year. Yeah, okay. the kindergartners that we started with in the original pilot year are now fifth graders and I will say it's been a very uneven implementation if you look at the blogs and I'd love to show you some yeah some of the kids don't have much work in some of the grades we're still working and I think it's also an assessment for us as as a school of of the kind of things that we're doing in the classrooms this is actually my daughter's blog she's in she's not in our school anymore she graduated last year and she's in a public high school now but if you see down here, um, wow. she, I don't know where her archives are, oh, she does not have her archives showing, but I wanted to show you that she started blogging in fifth grade. So this is a collection of her thinking, her work, her writing, um, even her voice and her process from the time that she was in fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. And she has math posts on here. She has. Um, she was able to show her learning in, in math in any way that she chose. So she loves to make these animated videos. She has book reviews oh, and book commercials. Great. And um, so, so she can continue to come back to this? So you're, are, you're allowing that to live on? Or how are you so all navigating that? What we've, that's been an issue that's come up is what happens to these blogs after the students graduate. And because it's on our mjgds.org server, uh, we do not allow them to continue blogging. We, we, uh, we close it off for new posts. We do leave it up for, for, their, for that it's there. So it's archived and it's frozen. frozen. Archived, and what we also have done, although not many have taken us up on it yet, is we will help them export it and move it to a new site if mm. they're in so inclined. Um, so that's our hope, is that is that kids will, will can keep going with this. And, th and it's WordPress MU, it the multi-user? It is WordPress multi-user. And the, the website mjgds.org stands for Martin J. Gottlieb Day School, which okay. is our school. And we also have mjgds.org slash classrooms. Every classroom also has a blog. Can you in see that? And we started with the classroom blogs um, as a way to help our teachers start to understand. I'm actually going to take you to, well, let me take you to a page. 
And this is also creating institutional memory for our school because it's not well working, changed. yeah. In, oh, in, yeah. in six years, you know, we may have had different teachers, so right. we can still go back. Right. And, and this is all self-hosted, so you're not worried about such and such company going away. You guys own this, which is, which is huge. So this, um, this is our fifth graders, and actually, um, so I taught these kids last year. I was uh, fourth and fifth grade language arts, and so we did a lot. I'm going to show you some cool stuff. Okay, so, and they get to choose their theme. You know, it's very creative. Tell, tell me really quickly, blog folio. What, is, what does a blog folio mean? Or maybe you want to show, show it here. I mean, sure, I can show it. Does it mean so, everything that they've done, or does it mean a showcase of their best work? So, we started out creating digital portfolios, which is a huge thing right now, which is a wonderful game changer. You, you're reflective, you find your best work, you describe why it's your best work, how you could make it better. But we had it on a blog site, and what we found was that when we gave a kid a blog, they wanted to just create stuff and share stuff and write stuff, and we didn't want to stop that that creative process. So you were process. thinking more showcase, they were thinking more everything. So I think I might have coined the term, but probably not. Probably a hundred people did at the same time, but uh, I came up with this idea of let's give them a blog folio. And we do use it as a showcase, and you can see we just, uh, and, the, and the whole platform of doing this I think is very transformational for schools because we used to have, um, you know, the parent-teacher conferences. I mean, so this shows to me, this is an assessment of also the kinds of teaching that are going on in the classroom when a child's right. best work is to take a picture of a math quiz and say, it's my best work because I got 100%. Um, we can also reflect as teachers of maybe how we might do things differently. Is the blog folio then the showcase? This is their best work, or is this a place too where they can just post and write? So again, we're in process, um, and we have different teachers who are in, at different points on the on the journey as well of their own growth of understanding this tool and this platform. So for some. Um, we do have a framework which I created, which is is a new tool that I've just created this year of uh, the the minimum requirements of what your students are minimally required to have on the blog folio in a year. And so we have some teachers who are doing just the minimum requirement and um, not really encouraging the the connections. And so so that's where they are on the path. Um, and other teachers and students are much more open-ended and getting much more out of it. So, okay. um, so there's choices and so we're all. I mean, we're all on a journey, right? And so I want to go. Actually, I want to show. So, um, so one thing that I've done with the kids is I have them create a page of commenting guidelines. Nice. Um, talking about their own personal commenting policy. So really thinking about how they want others to. Um, so they've individually then developed a commenting policy yes. that they you know, hope people will see and then follow. So if you go to any of the blogs, um, unless it's a new student, grades 5th through 8th, they will have a commenting policy. And again, it's expressed. Some did an animated video. This was, a, I think, a pic collage. Um, and it really, somebody actually commented to me, which I hadn't thought of it that way, is that we're teaching kids how we want to be treated and how um, how really how we want to treat others. Mm -hmm. Defining yeah. expectations and communicating expectations. Yeah, which I really like that. Um, you know, and then when they go to somebody else's blog, like thinking about what does that person want from mm -hmm. you in terms of interaction. So we're, that's, that's I would say, a more advanced step in the process uh, for the teachers who are really have the blog folio part down is to maybe some of the more advanced pieces we're working with are the connecting piece of mm -hmm. helping students um, understand that this this has potential for um, for be, being connected um, and how what that means for you as like you know to use the word digital citizenship and mm -hmm. how to go get out there and how to check your comments we let them moderate their own comments okay. um, we've given them a lot of trust and responsibility with this and I mean I could talk about it all day long but I, I know we don't have all day but no but if people um, want to connect with you there's your website so, I'm going to show you one more thing. Andrew so this Hernandez. year, I just created uh, my own Twitter. blog folio on the site, which is 
All of the, the URLs are mjgds.org slash students slash first name last initial. So I'm starting to put some of the resources um, that I'm creating for professional development oh, on a blog great. folio as well. So this oh, is the framework. That. that looks great. Thank you. So wow. these are the, the basic requirements, the yes. do's and don'ts, um, oh, and wow. then just an overview of, of what this means in terms of like the core values that it that it brings, um, and then the components. So this is kind of my this assessment of my six-year process. Wow, phenomenal. Okay, and so thank do you, you do professional development with other I schools? Do. All right. And so, this is a passion of mine. Absolutely. So any last like advice for folks who are going to embark on this? Our, like for instance, our school, we haven't done a lot of blogging. I'm thinking. I mean, there's Kid Blog, there's these other, you know, Edu Blogs and other platforms, but then the self-hosted. I mean, if, if, if a school wants to take this initiative and jump in, you think there's really just a lot of benefits for the route that you followed? I, I do really like it. Um, I think it's worked really well for us. It gives us a lot of, of open-endedness. Um, I, have, I have tried a lot of other platforms. Even before we started this, I had tried many of the platforms and even have since. My understanding is that EduBlogs provide something similar, mm -hmm. um, but you pay for it. So we can... We can uh, put as many as we want. It's just how much hosting space are right. we paying for. Right. Um, so, but to me, it's really, I'm a teacher and it's about the pedagogy and the, and the, um, what this is able to do for, in terms of transforming teaching and learning at our school and documenting growth and, and looking at growth instead of trying to put kids in a box with these closed ended assessments to give them open ended, um, ability to share who they are and be creative and what they know and the way that they like to know it and give them tools and um yeah i'm awesome. really super excited about it That's thank so you great. so much for taking oh, the time thank to, you um, for sharing i hope lots of people will check out your site so That's again really cool. you are ed tech workshop on twitter and Andrew well, and you know what work. and i'm not that happy with my blog i'm in the process of, of working well on we're it. all on a journey right <laughs> we're all on a journey. <laughs> that's right so that's it, yeah.